part of the save the world narrative, that's already a red flag for me. A lot of harm that's been done historically by people who are trying to save the world. Like, do you know what the last big save the world campaign was that was fully grounded in almost universally accepted science? It was eugenics. Big threat to humanity was genetic degradation. And the solution was to sterilize the unfit. Most scientists, most doctors, and most educated people believed in that. And we saw what, you know, the result play out first half of the 20th century. And that's not, I'm not trying to equate, you know, climate change activism with fascism or anything like that. But it's just like, when you think that you are saving the world, you become a fundamentalist because that's the most important thing. And it's worth sacrificing everything else to that God. Another problem with it, in addition to what you mentioned, is that people who adopt that, okay, we're saving the world. You, because you're not with us, you are a threat to the to the world, to the planet itself. So, so people who believe that, they emanate the stink of self-righteousness that just turns other people off. On some level, you know that you are not a bad guy. I mean, assuming that you're not, you know, like a full-blown psychopath or whatever, you have, your heart knows the truth that you care about life. And when somebody is telling you that you are bad or believes that you're bad, you're going to reject them as not a carrier of truth. That's not all there is to human nature. There's also a transcendent dimension that we are we are being presented with right now as a choice. And it's about it's about compassion, it's about forgiveness, it's about putting yourself in someone else's shoes, it's about generosity of listening, it's about humility, it's about humbling yourself to what's true, even if it might not fit in with your self-image, even if it might mean that you were wrong about something. Because let's face it, everybody, everybody listening to this is probably wrong about something, one of their deep convictions. If you are, how are you ever going to know that when that is so part of your identity? Like, like if, and if you want the other people, the wrong side, to ever change their mind, then you have to be willing to change your mind too. Otherwise, if you're not willing, because you just know you're right, you're setting an example of the human being that they're going to conform to too. They know they're right just as much as you know you're right. So what is... And that's not to, to say, like, betray what you genuinely know, but it's to look at, OK, the things I believe, how many of them do I know from direct experience? Why do I believe the things that I believe? And what would it be like to not believe them? What would I lose to not believe them? And am I willing to not believe them? Or are those things I would lose too precious that even if I'm wrong, I am not going to let go of this belief. Like, let's get honest with ourselves first. Then we have the possibility of actual conversation rather than the debate or really the shouting match that prevails in public discourse today.